Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Greetings to everyone, brothers and sisters. Thank God for this morning. Amen. Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, bless you all. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Um, I was just in prayer this morning, seeking the Lord, just inquiring in His way. Just, you know, I got a whole lot of growing and learning to do. When I realized that you cannot not stop learning the things of God. God got so much in stores for us to know Him in this. Amen. I just want to be able to just to go in the Word and share something briefly that's on my heart to share. Maybe encourage somebody, if not everybody that's out there. But we need a, a sure word from the Lord. We need a word that, that can really stick to our guts. We need a word that can stick to our minds when we go to sleep at night. We need a word that can stick into our hearts when we're on our job and we can't stop thinking about it. Amen. Um, all we need is a word from the Lord. Amen. When I got saved, I was only 21. I, I, I must stress this. 21 years old. 21. Not 31, not 41, not 51. But 21. And I never really was raised in the church. And I, and I, and I just stress it enough because a lot of people feel that you need extra, extra stuff in the church to reach people. But you don't. All you need is the word of God. That's all I needed. That's all I needed at the age of 21. All I need was a word from the Lord that changed my entire life. The Holy Ghost came in my life. I realized the very problem was going on with the church, modern church, you know, that we are adding things into the body that God is not requiring from us. Amen. Praise God. I want to go on prayer before I really begin. Amen. Father, I thank you. I ask you that you hide me and your will be done. God, get the glory out of my life. Lord, I know this is a Facebook Live or people that may see it all across the world, Lord, other than, than the city that I'm in. Father, I come before your throne that your will be done and not mine. Lord, let your word flow through me as rivers of living water, casting down every stronghold of the enemy. Let the eyes be open and the ears be, be, be open, O oh God, to hear the voice of you, O oh Lord, to, 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 that the truth may make them free, make me free, Lord, in the times that we are living in. Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Man, as, as I... I, I, I know I'm not the only one that's been watching some of the videos that's, you know, been shared on, on Facebook, but I know, you know, I'm not, I don't like to be so quick to try to expose certain stuff, but certain stuff just ought not to be in the, in the house of the Lord or the temple. Some things you just don't allow in the church. Amen. Like I just recently posted a video about, you know, some group of people that were just dancing worldly in the church. And I remember how lost I was. Now I wasn't always saved. I can tell you that now. I was not always saved. I did not always have a Lord in my life. But I, I used to be, when I was of the world, when I used to bump my music, I had something in my right mind at least to know to turn my music down every time I passed the church building. I at least had some kind of fear. But this generation that I'm in now has no fear of the Lord. No fear. People are looking for popularity now. People, people will do anything to be able to make themselves be known, but yet using the name of Christ to become popular. Whether they being having filthy conversation, whether they doing something that's so ungodly and unseemly. And I know that the devil, what he is doing, the devil is trying to paint a different picture of what the church is not. The devil is going against the grain of the church. The devil is going against the, the, the image of Christ. That's why he's the Antichrist. The enemy is painting another picture of what the gospel of Christ is really not. This is why we see so much stuff that's going on, that's being posted on, on timelines and on Facebook of some, some stuff that's so wicked. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's so wicked. And yet it's, it's breaking my heart whether people know it or not. 
this stuff breaks my heart, man, because I realize that when I'm trying to be able to bring hope to people, but when I see stuff like this, this can be such of a downfall of people losing hope. Oh, I can go to church and get saved. But how in the world that we allow stuff like this to come in? There are a lot of people that are truly not ordained by the Lord. I can understand if somebody was really crying out to be saved. To want to get their life to Jesus. That's the difference. You pray for them. You pray until God deliver that individual. But when you got things that crept in boldly in the house of the Lord. Truly causing people to fall from the faith. Amen. Listen. I know one thing. When you got elderly, elderly people. That season in the word of the Lord. As me being a young man in the gospel. But I look at when those people that are in the faith that's older than I am, when they pass and gone, who going to hold up the standard of the Lord? I'm talking about when Facebook is all over with. I'm talking about when you don't have Facebook Live no more. When you may can't even share the gospel of the true gospel of Christ no more. When you can't really truly share that gospel like to the highway and hedges. Who going to uphold the mandate of God? Who going to uphold the mandate? Listen, the Bible requires for his disciples to deny themselves, to take up the cross, and follow after him. When I know I have a pastor back at home, have taught the word of God to me, show me the right way on how to live this life, and then I took consideration to search myself, to study, and to show myself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Amos 8 11. It talks about that it's going to be a famine of the word of the Lord. Amen. There's going to be a famine of the word. As when we get taught, see, I thank God for a privilege to have somebody as a man of God that can teach the truth, but not looking for all this extra stuff that's coming in. When I realize is this, my topic that I got was all we need is a word from the Lord. Why am I why did I make that statement? It's because we adding a lot of stuff to the truth. We adding stuff to the word of God. We adding stuff to the church that is that does that we don't really need. All we need is a word. We can have a whole list of program, but then at the very bottom you got the word of God. You got all this extra stuff for hours until the words take place. Why is that? Reason why I'm saying it is because see this this, this is what we got to really come to realization. It's because <coughs> that. When the word of God become absent in the churches, that's when we need substitute. And the Holy Spirit shared to me in a natural sense. You take a full-time teacher in school. A full-time teacher in school, they teach you because they've been ordained, they've been equipped, they went through the process, they went and they got their, 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 their degree. They didn't just become a teacher without not going through a process. Now they're a teacher full-time. But when a teacher may not show up a certain day, they got what you call substitute teachers. That teacher that's a substitute is not certified for that class for the whole year. They only there because the teacher is absent. What happened to the body of Christ? The teacher has become absent because people is not willing to receive the truth. Only way for Christ to be absent is people is pushing them out of the church. Listen, I know that Christ coming for a glorious church. Christ coming back for a church without spot, without wrinkle. Amen. For our body, hallelujah, our body is the temple. Yes, it is. But we must present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Can we do it by ourselves? Most certainly not. We need the Holy Ghost. But why are we allowing all this other stuff that's coming in? Listen, how you can reach your youth is with the word of God. Not with dancing, not with rap songs. No, that's what's wrong with the church. That's what's wrong now. We, have, we are substituting the world stuff for the word of God. As if God's word is powerless. As if God's word can't fulfill our needs. As if God's word can't Fill that void that's in our heart. We need some of the world stuff to fulfill our void. We need some of the world songs 
Listen, when I was lost, I was with the world. When I was in the world and of the world, I loved the world. I was doing the things of the world. Hallelujah. But when Jesus came and broke me down into tears, hallelujah, made me out of a baby, crying all over again. Never knew who I really was until Christ really came into my life. Now I'm free from my sins. Looking at my hands, my hands look new. Looking at everything, I'm like, Lord, this is, this is you and me. Now, with me being born again, people may say, oh, you think you just better than everybody, or you holier than thou, you a Bible thumper, you ain't showing no love, or, or you, you, you got to be patient. You, you, look, look, you, you, we all sin and fall and mi misinterpret the scripture. It said we all have sin and fall short of the glory. I mean, half. I went to English class, and I know my present, past, and future tense. That's past tense. I mean, half. Then he said, Paul made a statement, shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound, certainly not. He that committed sin is of the devil. First, first John chapter 3, verse, not, verse 8. It said, he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. God want to deliver us. From the sin business. God want to truly deliver us. After we've been delivered from sin. Yes. We must grow in grace. After we've been delivered from sin. Yes. We must grow in Christ the more. There's a lot of stuff that I got a lot of growing more to do. But when I come to the knowledge of the truth. To not do such things. I flee from it. The Bible said. Submit to God. Resist the devil. And he shall flee from you. Amen. How in the world that I can resist the devil. And if I'm giving an invitation. How can I resist something that I'm giving an invitation to? Look at what the scripture says in Jeremiah chapter 7. Help me, Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost in my life every day of my life. In the year 2018, we need to be crying for the Holy Ghost. In the year 2018, we need to cry for more boldness in the Lord. In the year 2018, we don't listen. And nothing wrong with getting a house. Nothing wrong with getting a new job with money to be able to secure your needs. Amen. But we really need a solid foundation from the Lord. Because in the generation that we in, when the elderly people leave this earth, when the people are gone that's 60 years old, 50 years old, 70 years old, who going to hold up that standard, y'all? Who going to hold up the mandate when all this other stuff creeping in? Come on. Man, all, it, listen, this is going to be a generation of anything goes if we don't watch it. This is going to be a generation <coughs> of anything that can come in because it's going to have on the church door say no judgment zone. Y'all going to be like Planet Fitness. Hallelujah. But y'all going to be so out of shape because... Anything that's out of order, out of God, God can't use. That's why God said in the beginning, let there be light. Hallelujah. The Bible said up on the face of the deep, the, the, it was void. Hallelujah. It was without void. Come on, y'all. In Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. But he said the earth was, was formed, but it was without void. But God had to speak, let there be light. Hallelujah. Upon the earth, and then there was light. In the world, listen, we living in, there got to be light in our life. Somebody is preaching a different gospel. Every time I open up the Bible, I say, Lord, it's contrary. I'm not making myself perfect or better than somebody, but I'm going based on what the manual says. If you read a manual that's in your car, that's contrary. Listen, come on, y'all. That's why we got a manual in the car that we drive or the truck that we drive to show us what we need in the body. See, it shows you how you change a tune up. It shows you where your steering wheel is. It shows you where the brake and the gas is. It shows you how to put your vehicle in reverse. It it shows you how to let your window down. I'm talking about the vehicle. See, there's many operations in the body, but by the same spirit. How in the world that we say we not we don't have need of our hand and we the head? And how the the hand say you have no need of the feet if you're not the feet? See, all got different functions. Hallelujah. All got different functions. But when you're not functioning properly and orderly as God commanded, something is out of order. I know people, listen, I'm not trying to rush this gospel. I'm not trying to rush. Hold on. Hallelujah. We need to understand, y'all. Don't take my word. We need to open up this word ourselves. Because, see, there's something that's out of order. I can point fingers all day long and say, man, this ain't right, this ain't right, this ain't right. But at the same time, if it ain't right, how did we get off? That's the how in the world we get off? How in the world we we 
We done got so desperate that we need the world now. Hallelujah. How in the world that we need the things of this world to fulfill our vote? Jesus said, be not, listen, Paul made a statement in Romans 12. He said, be ye not conformed. To this world, man, my God. He said, don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing. Renewing. It's a continuing thing of your mind. Hallelujah. That means when you really say, I'm going to make it up in my mind, I don't care. You're going to lose some friends that was going to church because they didn't want to really crucify their flesh. You're going to lose a lot of people that you was in, in circles with. Because you like, listen, I can't even be coarse joking. I can't even be talking about jokes like that with you. Because God said for us not to. Oh, can I prove it? Let's go to Ephesians real quick. Ephesians chapter 5. This is love. This is what he, and, and this is how the Bible addresses love. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also had loved us. And have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. But for an occasion and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. Now, this ain't for the sinners. This ain't for those that are, you know, lost in sin. They go fornicate. They go commit adultery. They go um, curse like a sailor. They go gamble. They go shoot dice. They go kill people. They go do all those things. They go do stuff like that because they lost. They lost, of course. I, the Bible said we once was foolish. We once was lost. I'm going to be the same. I, I was lost just like that. I was lost. But then he said, I have called you. He said, you are wrong. chosen generation. He said, I have called you out of darkness. Get out of that darkness. And I have called you into my marvelous light to show forth the praises of him. Hallelujah. How in the world I say I have fellowship with Christ and walk in darkness. First John 1 and 6. How I say I have fellowship. People are trying to justify their sins. Listen, there's enough time out for all justification. Stop trying to justify. I ain't trying to just. I want, if I got something in me that's a sinful thing before the Lord, get, I, I want this thing out of me. I need, I, I'm a cry for help. I ain't trying to hold on to the sin that's going to send me to hell. I ain't trying to have a group of friends that can be on my side, but living like the world to send me to hell. Hell is real, people. It may be fun on earth right now. Fornicating, getting drunk, getting high may be fine right now. But when you die, nobody ain't going to be around you. But you're going to be judged according to your deeds, the Bible said. Every man going to be held accountable to every done thing that's done in his body. Hallelujah. In this world, God, listen, he said, in this world, I'm going to judge. He's judging you right now. Yo, everything you're doing is being recorded right now. He said, but I'm going to judge every man But on, on, that, on that day of judgment. It's appointed unto man who wants to die. After death, the judgment. Amen. The Bible said, let us be boldly, uh, be able to be boldly on the day of judgment. As we be like him. I want to be like Christ. I know that may be a song, I want to be like Christ. No, I truly want to be like Christ. I got to deny me. I know people ain't going to like you because you're willing to stand. I know people ain't going to want to hear you because you really preaching the truth. Hallelujah. This is what it says in verse 4. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor... Oh my God. It said neither filthiness nor foolish talking. People that's outside, you know, you might be in the church, all right. You know, you I'm dignified and, you know, I'm, I'm holy and I'm sanctified. Amen. You can't tell me, look, I, I, I'm, I'm so saved, you almost think I'm in heaven. But when I leave from the sanctuary, I'm using all kind of profanity things. Listen, I'm talking about those that know they should not be doing this. I ain't talking about those that are lost. If you're lost, of course, it's in your spirit. You must be born again. You must be changed by the power of God. You must cry to God, say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Have mercy on me. For that man will leave justified if you repent from your sins. 
Only Christ can come in to bring the increase. One plant, one water, but God will bring the increase. Hallelujah. No, fit, no, no foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Now, I go to Jeremiah chapter 7. Here it reads, in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 24. But they hear not, nor incline their ear, but walk in the counsel and in the imagination of their evil heart. I wish you had your Bibles because see, it's important for you to have your Bibles open. Don't just think I'm just reading something that's just out of my own mind and I got a different kind of Bible. No, listen, open up your Bible and read for yourself because it says clearly in 24, Jeremiah chapter 7. But they hear cannot, nor incline their ear, but walk in the counsels. And the imagination of their evil heart. And went backward and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt. Unto this day I have even sent unto you all my servants. God's trying to send all his true servants. Hallelujah. To warn you. Many people say I ain't got time for Facebook preachers. Man, listen, if Facebook shut down, goodbye. I'm still going to preach the gospel in season and out of season. Facebook is not my life. I'm just on here because I know it's a tool to be used to share the gospel abroad. Reach people in places I ain't never been for the gospel's sake. Not for a notoriety, not for popularity. You do not have to like me. You can unfollow me. You can delete me. You can dislike it. It doesn't matter. Listen, I love God. I love people. It's just the gospel that I got to share because of our obedience unto my God whom I serve. It's not by people who I'm trying to please. It's Christ in me. He said it's no more I, but it's Christ that live in me now. Therefore, I got to bring my body under subjection regardless on what people may Consider what's right and what's not. What did God say is right? What did God's word say? In other words, my word don't mean nothing concerning to God's word. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. In, 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 20, in 25, it says that he has sent unto you all his service, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hear not unto me, nor incline their ear, but harden their neck. What's happening? We rather we rather share a lot of stuff that's that's porn and filthy girls shaking their booty, half naked, but then you on church on Sunday. Listen, I'm praying for you, sister. Sister, you don't need to be like that. Don't show your body off to the world. Listen, maybe one day you may get married. Stop while you can. Stop shacking up with men while you can. Stop fornicating while you can. Why? Because you destroy yourself. That's why the devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. Some got AIDS right now. Some got STDs right now. Because the devil is out to destroy your life. It was fun for a moment. But then all the fun went away. All your friends ain't talking with you. But they talking about you now. Oh, boy, she got the, boy, she got the stuff, boy. Oh, she messed up. And, the, and you think the world really love you. They don't. Christ died for you on this matter. Christ died for the ungodly, for we can be saved. I'm not trying to bring you down, sister. Brother, you too. Keep your pants up, man. You ain't no man because you lay it down. No, you a man because you lay your life down for Christ. Hallelujah. That's when you become a man. You become a man when you're a follower of Jesus. You become a man when you submit to Christ. You become a man when you say, Lord, no more I, but it's you now. That's when you become a man. Not because you got money. Not because you got a car. You can have all that and still be abusive. You got all that and still hitting on your wife. You got all that and still calling her out of her name. Come on. The devil is a liar. You must know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Your will be done. Man, I, listen, I'm angry at the devil. If anybody feeling their spirit, boy, he, uh, listen, it, I'm angry at the devil himself because he's out to deceive the whole world. 
The devil ain't got no time to waste. His time is running out. He's trying to get everybody that he can. He's trying to get everybody down into the pit of hell. Hell was designed for the devil and the fallen angels that followed along with Lucifer. Listen, where do you think they are at right now? The Bible said they was cast down out of heaven. Listen, the Bible said he transformed as an angel of light. The enemy is here, people. You just don't see him and he's out to deceive. That's why God said, be watchful and pray for the devil, your adversary seeking whom he may devour. The enemy is seeking to devour everybody. I, the devil don't mind me going to a temple. Hallelujah. Praise God. Dancing and all that. The devil don't want me to obey the gospel. The devil don't want me to submit to God. Because once you do that and you resist the devil, then he will flee. Don't give, listen, watch certain movies, like ungodly movies, like horror movies, scary, listen, oh, family night, oh, we having a family night, let's watch the grudge, y'all, but we just came from church and having a hallelujah prayer night, and praying, and we watching the grudge, we watching uh, Fifty Shade or whatever the movie is, and we watching all this other, uh, the Empire show, we watching the uh, um, um, uh, Housewives of Atlanta, whatever, all this Listen, gossiping. We allow this stuff to get in our spirit, y'all. We laughing and like, ooh, ooh. You see, I can't wait till the next episode. Your next episode may be ending up in hell. In hell, you lifting up your eyes and saying, Lord, I missed the episode. Lord, I, I'm sorry. It's too late. But see, this is what we got to get right now. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. And let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. Hallelujah. We got to really take the word of God or what it says. Glory to God. If we don't, we going to find ourselves the one that's lost. Lord, Lord, did we not cast out devils? Lord, Lord, did I not? He said, no, depart from me. You workers of iniquity. You was in joy. The Bible said, love rejoices not in iniquity. Love is patient. Love is kind. Hallelujah. Come on now. This is why he said, love rejoices not in iniquity. When you know you love the Lord, you don't want to rejoice in iniquity. You don't want to have no dealings with these. And listen, I'm not finna sit here and eat popcorn and watch stuff that's ungodly. If you're going to watch something, watch it to look at it and be like, Lord, this is something we don't need to watch. If you're a pastor in the church, you watch it and look at it and say, look, hey, hey church, we can't be watching it because this stuff will get in our spirit and it will, it will lead us the wrong path. It will lead us the wrong way because I'm trying to preach a word to you, but yeah, on your mind, you got um, Housewives of Atlanta. And on your mind, you got Preachers of LA. On your mind, you got the Empire Show. On your mind, you got the, uh, the most scary movie alive coming out in February. Whatever, some kind of stuff like this. And you go into the movie and you watch stuff like that. You see how this stuff get in your spirit. We got to be watchful or what the devil is doing. We may not see the devil with horns. And Listen, the devil can come out with horns now. And you still think it's not the devil. The devil can make a show called uh, Lucifer. The show Lucifer. And you still laughing. Ha, ha, ha. It's really not a devil, though. It's really not a devil. It's a show, y'all. It's not real. It's an it's a act. It's an act. You think it's an act? You think this? Come on here. Television programming is getting your is programming your brain to be... In literally stu stupidity, like you, you literally losing your mind of what Christ. Listen, man, people, God, the devil is a liar. The devil is after your soul. Hear what the word of the Lord says. Verse 27 in Jeremiah chapter 7. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hear it to thee. said, thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt say unto them, this is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receive it correct, correction. Listen, God, listen, I don't care what nobody say about the Bible is, is out of date or whatever. Listen, this good, is this, this good stuff. God's word is so good that he even knew in 2018, what it was going to be like. This is a nation that obeyed not the voice of the Lord, their God. And people so quick to say, we are one nation under God. And I'm like, what nation we talking about? One nation under God. Man, I'm like, somebody need to shake that person out of sleep. And wake them up. And say, look. Like, God got to take you through a, a, another realm and say, look. 
It said, he said, it said, the wicked shall be turned, in Psalms 9, verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forgets God, all of them, not just America, all the nations. We talking about all oh, we we uh, and listen. Even the, you know I got uncles and people that been in the you know the military and the army that died for the country. But how is it that we can lift that up so high, but can't lift to the one that died for the whole world? Christ died on the cross. He was the ultimate chief commander, the true soldier. Hallelujah! That took upon the sins of the whole world that no man could do. It's good, yeah, a soldier can die. A soldier got, got weapons, but Jesus had a weapon that no man could see. Which is the word of God. Which he gave his life for all of us. But how is it that we go into church and we dancing with worldly songs? Come on, people. We got to take it. Everybody that's a believer of Christ, I don't, listen, I know we do it out of love. We got to speak the truth in love. I don't try to bash uh, homosexuals. Homosexuals just need to repent. And be saved. Get the Holy Ghost. You ain't finna convince me that you got Christ. If I was lost in sin, you ain't finna convince me that you got Jesus. I'm gonna look at you like, bro, I got the devil in me just like you got the devil in you. You lost just like I'm lost. Come on. How can Satan cast out Satan? How can the devil cast out another devil? That's a devil's lie. It can't happen. It won't happen. My God help us today. He said that the He said that obey not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receive a correction. Watch this now. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. Hallelujah. Lord help us, Lord. It's cut off from their mouth. It's cut off from their mouth. Truth is perished. I don't want to hear all that. It don't take all that. Listen, if people appreciate your pastor that's really preaching the truth, because when he's gone, somebody going to have to uphold that mandate. Consider the Bible tells me, count up the cost. I'm counting right now because I look around and I say, man, Lord, what of all the, the true men of God today and the people of God that's really holding up this mandate and they go on with you? And we are left here as a generation. We are the millennium. From the age group of like 18 or 19 through 36, 35 or whatever. We are like in the millennium group of those that are really holding up the man. But when they go on with the Lord. What are the millennium going to do and hold up the gospel? Hallelujah. Think about it. Hallelujah. We are the ones that are preparing themselves saying, Lord, use me. I know, I know I'm going to go through. But use me. Have your way. I know I'm going to be this light. I know I'm going to lose a lot of friends. But use me. Because when you pray that prayer, it's a lot that come with that prayer. Lord, use me. It's a lot that come with that prayer. Lord, have your way with me. It's a lot that come with that prayer. Lord, increase in me. It's a lot that come with that prayer. Come on, y'all. When we ask God for that, the Bible says that if you suffer with Christ, you shall also reign with him. You can't, you can't cheat God. You can't try to go through to get the rain before the suffering. I know you, your suffering got to be well known that what the Bible said you being suffered for. Whether you being locked up, whether you being really persecuted for righteousness sake. Not just persecuted in any kind, for righteousness sake. For the gospel's sake. Hallelujah. When the people that's of the world like Pharisees, listen, the Pharisees had a very great problem with Jesus. You know why? Because Jesus went against the traditions of men. That's why he said, y'all have made the word of God, hallelujah, none effect by the tradition of men. Why? It's because they were so caught up on a traditional format, format that they had that was a form of godliness. But in, in reality, they were denying the power thereof. See, the Pharisees, they was well-dressed. Nothing wrong with well-dressed. But Jesus brought an example why did Jesus roll a donkey, y'all? Come on. He could have rode a horse. He could have rode on a chariot. He could have had people picking him up on his shoulders. On their shoulders. Jesus on people's shoulders because he's the king of kings. But Jesus didn't come out that way. He came out so humble enough that he rode a donkey. 
to show people humility. Then it don't take all that notoriety. <clears throat> when you know who you are, it don't take all that. When you know who you are, hallelujah, it don't take all the recognitions. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, boy, this, boy, holy ghost. It don't take all the recognition when you know who you are. Man, I thank the Holy Ghost. This is why we are in the end times. I know there's a lot I can share, but I'm telling you people, you know, even in same-sex marriage, listen, the devil is after the image of Christ. That's why he hates you. The devil hates you. Because when he see you, he see Christ. He see the image. You may not be living in it, but he see the image. You may not be abiding in it, but he see the image. You are godly. The man of God preached back in my hometown, my pastor. We are godly by design, which is the true statement. We are godly by design. But then the Holy Spirit shared to me afterwards when I heard that. But a lot of people are not godly in design. See, you are godly by design, but you need to be godly in design. Because when you in design, you operating in the design of Christ. You act, that's why the kingdom of God is in you. He said in Luke 17, 21. He said, behold, the kingdom of God is not here nor there, but it's in you. The kingdom needs to be awakened. See, the gospel, see, we can't be conformed to nothing. No patterns. He said, learn not to heed away nothing. Listen, I share to whoever. I don't want no dealings with the world. None. I, I don't care how close-minded I get. I don't care how narrow-minded people may call me. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Is God going to be mad about it? Hallelujah. I just want to get close to the word. I don't care how many people say, well, it don't take all that. That's fine with If you feel that way, I feel that narrow is the way. Hallelujah. Which leads to life and only free will find it. I feel it's the way like the Bible said, broad is the way and many will walk therein. For that's the way of destruction. And many will go. Not listen, I ain't going for nobody. I ain't trying to have many likes of people to say, oh, you know, look, by the time somebody try to Man, listen, the Bible said they have made the heart of the righteous sad. This is the last verse, hopefully, that I'm going to go through. And last scripture, last, last book. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 13. Watch what it says in verse 22. Because with lies, you have made the heart of the righteous sad. With lies. Listen, we got a lot of people, now, like I said before, there's a lot of people are standing for the truth. We got to appreciate the pastors, bishops, and leaders, and all across the earth that's standing for the truth. Now, I ain't talking about, I ain't talking about Mason, Mason preachers. I ain't talking, listen, if you're in Masonry, and I'm talking about the secret society, you a Mason, you of the devil. You need to repent. Ain't no secret society in my bone. I don't care what offering you trying to give me all that. Oh, you know, if you get... I, listen, a lot of that stuff that people getting blessed with, they call they getting blessed with, is because of the secret society called, quote unquote, brotherhood. And that ain't talking about brotherhood like the Bible said. It's different. And this is why we need to understand what the will of the Lord is and the true gospel. Cause I, I ain't afraid of the devil. The devil got to do to me. Hallelujah. The Lord changed my life. And he filled me with the Holy Ghost. I know there's a lot of people that may be mad because when you expose the unfruitful deeds of darkness, and then that's why the people don't want their deeds to be exposed because they love darkness rather than light. Come on, John chapter 3, verse 19 through 20 and all around down. It said that they deeds were evil because they love darkness rather than light. But with lies, the Bible said in Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 22, you have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthen the hands of the wicked, and that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. How many people are promising the wicked life right now? Oh, it's all right. The, regardless on what the preacher, only God can judge you. Only God. Only God can judge you. But they have strengthened the hands of the wicked, but made the heart of the righteous sad, the Bible says. Who's telling the truth here? See, there's a lot of people don't want to preach stuff out of the Bible like this. They want to go to, um, uh, men shall give it to your bosom. <laughs> 
press down, shaking together, and running over. And this is your year, in the year 2018. And God is going to bless you and with a new house and a new home. And got people hollering, whoa, this is my season. Whoa, come on, the devil is a lot. Anybody can do that. Come on. Anybody can do that. Gifts and callings is without repentance. Preach the truth, people. Preach the truth. We need the gospel according to Christ Jesus to be preached to our life. That's what we need. We don't need something to tickle us. I look at your neighbor and tell him this is your season. I know you've been going through. I know you've been having bills to pay. But here, pay this money. Give all your money. Give all your money and get broke. Get all your money and get broke. And that's what's going to happen. And now, you're not really getting the full milk and meat of the word of God. The Bible said we are to be teachers now, but we still drinking milk. Unskillful in the word of righteousness. I don't want somebody to preach something. No, I need to be taught. I want to be taught the word of what the Lord is saying. I want to grow in Christ. Hallelujah. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. Nobody on earth got a resurrection to, um, to, to, to raise me up from. Only but Christ. Christ who died on the cross. No man on this earth right now have died for your sin. No man. God ordained people in the earth. God ordained men and women of God whom we give honor to and we appreciate. But every man and woman of God have a master too. And that master is in heaven. The father who is in heaven. We have a we have a father. That's why Jesus, listen again, Jesus didn't care about this. He, when, when a British ruler came to him, <coughs> said, um, good master, what must I do to, inter in, in, to inherit eternal life? And, it, and Jesus corrected him before he, even Jesus gave him an answer. He said, no one good but the Father. In other words, Jesus even didn't consider, he said, don't even call me good. He said, I'm going to direct you and point you to the Father. But though the Father was in Jesus, Hallelujah. Because when the Philip said, hey, show us the Father. And then Jesus said, I've been with you all this long. Because I only say and do what my Father tells me to do. People are looking for a sign. Lord, show me a sign. And you're looking at them right now. Lord, show me a sign, Lord. Show me a sign, Lord. And God is showing you a sign. The rich man in hell that 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 the beggar that, that he didn't feed. And the Bible said when the rich man died, hallelujah. He In hell, he lifted up his eyes. And the Bible said that he said, oh, go warn my brothers, Lord. Go warn my brothers. He said, I got, I got the prophets in them to go warn them. If they don't want to hear them, well, that's on them. I'm paraphrasing it. But if you're reading the scriptures, the Bible said that, he said, I, got, I have Moses and the prophets. Hear ye them. So in other words, people are looking for a sign. But there was a sign of Jonas in Nineveh. You know what Nineveh's sign was? Jonah. Jonah, they were preaching the gospel to tell them to repent. And they fasted and they got a sackcloth and they, and, they, and, and they repented from their ways. And God withhold, withheld the judgment that he was about to take place on that city in Nineveh. What's going on? The Bible said, if my people which are called by my name, if they humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked way, and then will they, then will they hear from heaven and I will forgive them of their sins and I will heal their land. We want so much from God, but not and give so little to him. I'm going to say that again. We want so much from God and give so little to him. After all that Jesus done, the Bible said, I got I know, see, I know that that's the Lord. Hallelujah. In, Max, in Matthew 15, Matthew 15, in the book of Matthew 15, hear what it says this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 15 verses. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Verses 8. This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. Anybody can get behind a mic or even behind Facebook to be like, oh, I love the Lord. All oh, innocent. I love the Lord so much. He does so much for me, y'all. Oh, God. Y'all praying for me? Y'all praying for me? Oh, I need it, y'all. 
Amen. Prayer is good because the prayers of the righteous are very much. But in John 9, 31, it said, we do know he hear not a sinner's prayer, but them that be a worship of him and do it his will, him he hear it. Come on, y'all. We got to study the word of God. Every, every prayer God ain't hearing. Only the sinner's, listen, the only sin of prayer is repent. That's that's what you need to do. I needed to listen. I, I've been broken, and God's still breaking me today. Amen. This stuff is real. Come on, we gotta open up the Word of God for people to really see the truth of what it is. It's so much deception going on. Y'all ought to be tired of hearing the lies now. I'm tired of hearing the lies. I'm tired of being talked to and fro. I'm tired of being talked to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness. The Bible said they gotta. And listen, it's so much I can keep going as the Lord. Listen, I, I knew, you know, I, I wasn't intending to go along with the video, <clears throat> but as the Lord leads, amen. If we got enough time to be behind a football game or a TV show that we watch or whatever, surely we can just take a little bit more time out to hear more of the word of the Lord. Amen. Y'all bear with me as the Lord give me the strength to be able to show for the gospel that he hallelujah of his word. Amen. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And in and, and the book of Colossians, Kale, um, I have a hard time pronouncing it. Colossians, Colossians, whatever it is. Chapter 2. Amen. Praise God. It says this. As in verse 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. As you have been taught. As you have been taught. See, you, I don't care. Listen, you ain't just going to get saved by yourself. Somebody had to teach you. Somebody taught me. I'm under leadership. I've been taught by a man of God. Amen. I'm going through um, the learning process. You ain't no way around it. You can't just, oh, I got Jesus and nobody else. Well, how you expect for somebody to, to hear you or listen to you if the Lord may call you to do um, ministry or call you to a church? And everybody had that same attitude. I don't, I, I, huh? You need to be taught by somebody that's, that's been equipped, that went through the process that can show you, oh, oh I've been there, brother. I've been there. This is how we get out. We gotta pray our way. This, this is this is what this is this is how I've been there. Our sister been there. That's why the Bible said, "Let the strong bear the infirmities of the weak." You need to, you know. That's why he was talking about forsake not thyself among the, uh, the assembly. He ain't talking about a building. He talking about a gathering of true believers that's really with one accord, according to the word, not according to their opinions. But you gotta have somebody that uh, the Bible said in Jeremiah, "I will give you pastors according to mine heart. They will feed you knowledge and understanding." Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God will send people. Yo, but we got to have a heart to seek God with all of our truth, with, with all of his truth. Amen. Seek God with our whole heart. Amen. Okay. Colossians uh, chapter 2, verse 6. I said, as, he, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Verse 7. Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as you have been taught. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. Verse 8 says this, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Goes all the way back to the topic of this, of this video. All we need is a word from the Lord. We don't need all this addition, this, this stuff that we adding to the church. The Bible said in Revelation, if anything be added to the prophecy of this book and anything to be taken away, he God said, I will take away your name from the book of life. Hallelujah. This is what God is saying that he does not need no help. The Lord do not need any substitute teacher to come in to take place of what his word has already said. See, we are substituting what we are substituting things. That's why I said when a teacher that's in a school system, they there to teach there the whole year, the year after that, the year after that, because they've been rooted, they've been built up in the establishment. I'm not taking nothing outside of what the Lord has given me. This is what the word of the Lord is saying. When you have a teacher, everybody have a favorite teacher that they may know. Everybody have a teacher that they remember that made them laugh. 
in school or middle school, junior high, middle school, elementary, whatever. Everybody had a teacher that they can remember. Remember that teacher that was there faithful and you still graduated and you can go back to your third grade teacher and still remember them and they still teaching that same grade today? Or something, you know, or they about to retire, they just retired. See, we have the kind of realization when the teacher is there, they dare to stay, not there to go. Now, hallelujah. What I'm trying to share is this, that the greatest teacher on earth is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. The greatest teacher, hallelujah, he said, I will lead and guide you into all truth. Amen. The greatest teacher, Jesus, that's why he said, if I don't go, Jesus said, if he don't go, he said, it'd be best for me to go. Because when I go, when you see, I'm going to send you a comforter. He said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to bring you the greatest teacher. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, he shall bring all things to your remembrance. Amen. So when we see things that's not of God, amen, we be like, whoa, red flag. You know, see, anything that's counterfeit, we stop and say, wait a minute, get that off. Any counterfeit money, go, go, to, you know, go to Walmart or go to a bank, Walmart self-checkout and put a fake money in there. I bet it probably spit it right back out. That's what we ought to be doing to counterfeit people that's in the body. Anything that's counterfeit, we got to spit it right back out. Because you portray it like a $100 bill, but you're not the real $100 bill. You know what Jesus said? Come on. Y'all know I hear it in the spirit of the Holy Ghost. In Revelation, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. In Revelation, dealing with this counterfeit money. Because there's a lot of counterfeit going on. And the Bible said in Revelation, hallelujah, chapter 3, verses Beginning in verse 14. And unto the angel of the Lord, unto the angel of the church of Laodicean, write these things, said the Amen. The faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. Verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou work you cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because, I'm going to keep going, because it's important. Verse 17, because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretch, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou may be clothed, and the and the and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with isolate that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten and be zealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my father in his throne. He that had an ear to an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. That he said it was a, it was a lukewarm church, uh, Lidosian. Right, these things said, Amen. He, he said they were neither hot nor cold, but because thou art lukewarm. I will spew you out. Now, let me paraphrase. Because thou are neither hot nor cold, because thou, thou are counterfeit, God going to spew you out. And if God was an ATM machine, or shall I say a self-checkout at Walmart, and we put ourselves in that machine, well, God spit me out concerning his word based on if I'm in friendship with the world that will make myself an enemy of God. James 4 and 4 said you adulterers and adulteress that be friendship with the world is an enemy of God. Well, God spit me out. If God was a self-checkout and I slide myself in, will God spew me out? Because that's the real self-examination that's going to take place on the day of judgment. You neither hot nor cold. But you have made the heart of the righteous sad and strengthened the hands of the wicked. Which I have not made sad, but you have made the heart of the righteous. Those that are really giving it all for the gospel's sake. They know they ain't the perfect being on earth. They know that. 
But the Bible said, be ye perfect. The Bible said, as Paul said, I ain't calling myself apprehended. But I'm forgetting those things that are behind. Now that I come to more of the knowledge of the truth, I'm pressing. I'm pressing towards the mark of the hot call of God in Christ Jesus. Now this call is hot call. It's not just some kind of call. It's a hot call that I'm pressing for. But I just read in Jeremiah chapter 7 that they have went backward and not forward. But here Paul said, I'm pressing for Just imagine you facing a generation pressing themselves backwards while you pressing forward. Now what a conflict. It's just like a head-on collision. The world is in full of drunkenness, driving on their way to hell. But here you go, pressing forward with everything you got. But here come the head collision. But you got to be strong enough in the Lord, only in the power of his might, to break through the head collision of the wave of the enemy. Because the Bible said the enemy, they come in like a flood. We shall lift up a step. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. Lift up a, the spirit of God shall lift up a standard against him. In other words, it got to be against. So, amen. It's not for me to go into the house of God and say, oh, they messed up. He messed up. She messed up. The Bible said it this. Don't point fingers. Don't like that. No, sir. The Bible said, ask 240. Save yourselves from this untoward generation. In other words, that's why Peter exhorted that. He said, save yourself because there's a lot going on. He said, I can't preach all this in one time, but it's so much going on. Save yourselves. As the song said, I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Tell them I'm saved and I'm sanctified. I'm Holy Ghost filled and I'm fire baptized. I got Jesus on my side and I'm running for my life. Hallelujah. I heard a brother in the Lord say a while back. He said, I'm going to change that song. I'm fighting for my life. And boy, that hit me in my spirit right on. I'm fighting for my life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Tell them I'm saved and I'm sanctified. I'm Holy Ghost filled. Because somebody may say, I don't know what's wrong with him. It don't take all that. You just tell them I'm saved and I'm sanctified. I'm Holy Ghost filled and I'm fire baptized. Because when you on fire for the Lord, you ain't just going to sit still. When you on fire for the Lord. See, when somebody in real life catch on fire, they didn't say you stop, drop, and roll. Amen. But see, one thing when you on fire for the Lord, because the Bible said you shall be what? Filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire. In other words, when the fire come in contact in your life, you ain't just going to sit still. There's going to be fire in your bones, shot up in your bones, that you can't be still. You can't keep quiet. Some things, yes, in life, I learned how to need, I need to be quiet. Some things, I need to just stay to myself and say, Lord, you know, Lord, touch, Lord, Lord, have your way. Jesus, everything, I ain't going to, it's a lot of stuff that I see that I ain't going to have to, it's a lot of stuff that you see that you just should not eat. Man, I got to get me good wisdom. He said, it's a lot of stuff that you know, but don't speak everything that you know, that you see. Amen. Hallelujah. Because some stuff that is just unlawful to even speak about. That's why still in the same, you preach the truth. You share the gospel. You expose the unfruitful deeds of darkness. But there's wisdom on how you go about doing it. Amen. But people just say, oh, when you preach a message like this, oh, you know, you need to show more love. Bible says, as many as I love, Jesus said, I rebuke and chasten. That's why, that's the love of Christ. But the world got a love that it's trying to portray as a church. Listen, he said, if, he said, if you was of the world, the world would love his own. In other words, the world got the love. That Christ is, ain't, ain't in it at all. The Bible said there's no greater love than, than, than a man that laid down his life for his friend. We got to understand the difference between the world love and the agape love. The agape love, the, the Godhead, the Yahweh, the, the you know, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. The beginning and the end and the first and the last. He, he's the before, he's the after. Amen. He is that I am that I am. That's who he is. Amen. That's why we got to come to the realization saying, Lord. You know, chastening me. And Hebrews said that if he cannot chasten you, he then you not his son. He said, You are a bastard. That's what the Bible. Oh, you think I'm you think I'm just making this up? I'm not making this up. Hallelujah. In Hebrews. Holy Ghost, help me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Here you go. It says this in Hebrews. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hebrews. Praise God. Praise God. Hebrews. Thank you, Lord. Chapter 12. 
Praise God. Let me begin in. Hallelujah. I begin in. Um, glory to God. You have not resisted unto. In verse 5. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 5. And you have forgotten the exhortation. Which speaking unto you as unto children. My son. Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Don't despise the chastening when it come. It said, nor faint when thou art rebuke of him. For whom the Lord loveth. This, now, this is the agape love. This is the love of Christ. I don't know what everybody is talking about. Well, you know, you got to reach them in love. I hope this reaching them. Because no... Listen, all this extra stuff, you got you can have a gospel rap group. Boy, that's how we reach our young people. I, I tell you the truth. I was 21 years old. I repeat again. In 2011, not too long ago, 21. And God changed my very life. Now people will be like, well, you a young man. Hallelujah. But when there was age in eternal life, when there was an age in the gospel of Christ, when there became an age, see the thing is, we 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 for we forsaken. The meaning of season in place of age. See, you can be old and still a fool. You can be young and still dumb. See, you don't understand what the will of the Lord is. The will of the Lord is not how old you are. And how I learned you can have a wisdom that's of this world that's foolish to God. You have a, 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 oh, you can be old and still on your way to hell. You can be young and still on your way to hell. It's a matter of how you have been growing in Christ. And they ain't got nothing to do with the physical realm. They got to do everything in the spiritual realm. Everything to do with the spiritual man. That's why he says spiritual milk. He didn't say something about a uh, uh, whole milk, uh, 1% or 2%, something that you can buy dairy, dairy milk. No, he ain't talking about the milk in the store. The sincere milk of the word. Then he said, then now, when you get milk of the word, you as babes in Christ, you begin to grow, get teeth in your mouth. For, for 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 Christ's sake, get teeth in your mouth to, to learn how to now bite on some meat, and then now somebody got to teach you how to have us to hold a spoon in your hand. Hallelujah! Because you still learning, you still growing. That's the key of not not getting beside myself. I don't grown. Nobody ain't telling me nothing. Cause when the Lord bless me, the Lord, if the Lord see fit for me to get up in age, fifty years old, sixty years old. I never want to get beside myself that I learned everything. I never want to get beside myself that I know it all. I always want to know for sure that I can still grow in Christ. I can still know him in depth stuff that I ain't never known about him when I was this age. When I was the age of 21. Hallelujah. We can't see, we can't allow the devil to come in our life to stunt our growth. See, that's how the devil, that's why you think the devil was after Jesus. And when they, when they said destroy all the babies under the age of two, destroy them all. See, the devil was trying to abort the purpose of Jesus coming. But the devil was already defeated. He was, see, listen, Jesus, the Bible said he was slain before the foundations of the world. The devil was too behind and too late to even catch up to what God has already ordained. Did y'all catch that? This is what the Holy Ghost is giving me. The devil was too late, too behind to even catch up for what God himself has already ordained before the foundations of the world. Christ was already slain. Jesus already shed his blood. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word, hallelujah, was God. The same was in the beginning. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us and beheld his glory. He was full of grace and truth. My God, this is something that we need, people. All this extra stuff. All we need is the word of God to rejuvenate our mind, to cast out that mess that we've been watching on TV, to cast out that mess that we've been hearing from people that's speaking of, of vain talk, that's speaking of vain vision, to speaking the stuff that's out of their own heart. They're saying the Lord said, and the Lord did not say. The Bible said they ran and God have not sent them. This is something that we need to sit with God, Lord Jesus. You got prophet before your name. Prophet so-and-so. Prophet is so-and-so. Man, you a lie. Listen, it don't take all that. Listen, man, that's a scary thing for you to be all oh, prophet so-and-so. Prophet is so-and-so. Man, listen, it don't take all. Listen. No. You don't have, listen, when John the Baptist was in the wilderness and they said, who are you? Are you a prophet? Are you, come on, give us some kind of title or name. Give us something that we can go by. 
I'm just a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Go tell them that. And preparing you the way of the Lord. Oh, well, they ain't going to draw them. See, that's what's wrong. That, that, listen, y'all, if y'all don't hear what I'm saying, what's, what's drawing a crowd a lot of people is because they got prophecies before their name. And then, and then they'll they, they go on Facebook. Oh, I got a prophecy in my spirit. Just come at your name and I'm going to tell you what the Lord is finna prophesy in your life on the day. And you're going to be a fool enough to, pro to write your name in a comment box. Oh, come on. Have we, begot, have we begotten this desperate? Have we gone this far from the Lord's word? That we need stuff like that? That somebody to prophesy a lie in our life? Come on, y'all. Christ didn't die for that. Hallelujah. Christ did not die for that. Look at the word of Jesus. Christ died for you that you can be saved from sin. All the way. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Ask God, Lord, help me, Lord. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. I want to know you in the power of your resurrection. Not just in preaching, but as, the, as what I preach. That it can, I can live this out, Lord. Hallelujah. Wherever, that I can be able to be an example as Christ is, Lord. Not just in church. Trying to um, shut down, shoot a mosquito. Like one preacher said. <laughs> he said it was so funny. It was, he said, shut down, shoot a mosquito. Oh, mommy, my knee hurt. Speaking the tongue. Come on, help me, somebody. E D D I E. That spells Eddie. <laughs> that man had me going. But the key is, it's saying, what's going to rouse the crowd to really wake up and get the message? Is it for me to prophesy lies to you? Come on, y'all. We got to really take the word for what it is. We got to, listen, it may, it going to hurt. It hurt me sometimes. I'm like, man, Lord. But that's how it is when you crucify do you think it felt good when Jesus was crossed? Do you, do you really think it felt good when Jesus was nailed to the cross? Huh? Do you really think it felt good when his hands was nailed? It, no, it didn't. Y'all people, I'm telling you, I'm praying in the name of Jesus that we get this message. It didn't feel good to Jesus, but he knew it was worth dying for you. He said that. He said that in his word. He meant that. He loved us. He loved us enough to tell us the truth. People. Amen. I'm praying in the name of Jesus that we really run away from those that are lying with the gospel. They're trying to get popular off the word of God. They're making money off the word of God. They're making God's word to become a merchandise. They're making you out of a merchandise. Don't allow that, people. Take heed. Let no man deceive you. For many will come in Christ's name, saying, I am Christ. Amen. But I'm just praying that it, it help touch someone's heart, my heart, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Watch out for the counterfeits. Know what's real. Amen. Don't be a lukewarm. Don't live a double life. Say, Lord, I'm, if I'm going to live for you, I'm going to go all the way. Because I'd I, I rather not. I rather go all the way for the Lord than to live in between. Because in, in this earth, in this walk with Christ, in reality, there's no in between. You can't live for the world and expect for God to accept you in his kingdom. You can't do the things what the world do. Listen. All this stuff in church, I don't care if people say I'm a Christian too and I and I believe it's okay to have all this in here and it's all right. No, it's not. It's not okay. Somebody got to speak up and say the devil's a lie. That's counterfeit because if anything that's counterfeit going to the bank, they're going to bring it back to you and they're going to send it back to sender and say, I'm sorry, this is counterfeit. This can't go into our bank. Have a good day, sir. Have a good day, ma'am. That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. I can't be, I can't play this. I don't want to play this. This is real, y'all. Time is running out. Jesus, help us, Lord. Father, help me, Lord. Help us, Lord. Touch now in your son Jesus' name. Lord, I know there's so much more. Oh, God, I pray that your will be done. Touch us all, Lord. Touch, bless those that had it near the earth. Oh, God, what your spirit is sent to the church. Lord. Lord, I ask you that you may increase. Lord, you know what all we have need of. We All we need is a word. We don't need no substitute. We don't need no addition. We don't need all no praise dancing people that's doing all. Because see, the Bible said a little leaven, leaven a whole lot. All we need is your word. Even for the children to be obedient. To learn how to be respectful to their parents. That's what they need. Not something that can keep them entertained and not really understanding what the will of the Lord.